Mao Zedong brought the communist revolution to China and gained political power through the barrel of a gun. The Chinese system he overthrew nearly 50 years ago was backward and corrupt. Few would argue the fact that he dragged China into the 20th century, but at a cost in human lives that is staggering. Suspected enemies of the party were murdered by the millions. Farming collectives and the great leap forward of industrialization that failed miserably and left millions more dead from starvation. Mao left a system of oppression that continues to this day, even as China moves forward with economic reforms and towards a central position on the world stage. For 25 years, Mao Zedong ruled one quarter of the world's population. He turned China from a feudal backwater into one of the most powerful countries in the world. I would say he was a genius. Even those who oppose him, who curse him, would say the same. But behind a wall of silence, we know he presided over the deaths of tens of millions of his countrymen. Mao was more like Stalin than Hitler, but he was responsible for many more deaths than either of them. He ruled as an emperor, but remained a simple man. We know that he didn't like to wash, that he was rubbed down with wet towels every night. We know that he never brushed his teeth. He was a peasant. This is the story of a man who was praised in his lifetime as a god, but may be judged in the future as one of the bloodiest dictators of the 20th century. China, the last important bastion of communism in the world. For more than 50 years, the country's history has been dominated by the shadow of one man, Mao Zedong. He's still revered as the founding father of modern China, the man who turned Marxism into Maoism and gave the Chinese people a new dignity and self-respect. People believe that Mao Zedong could bring happiness to them. There's a popular song called The East is Red, which goes, The East is Red, the Sun is Risen. Mao Zedong has appeared in China. Mao came from a peasant family. His parents and grandparents before them owned a three and a half acre plot of land in the village of Shaoshan Chan. It's a small hamlet in the province of Hunan in southern China. It was here, in a house which is now a museum, that Mao was born on December 26, 1893. China was a feudal society where a small elite lived well and millions barely survived. In the cities, opium addiction was widespread. In the countryside, feudal landlords ruled like kings and extorted punitive taxes. There were frequent peasant rebellions, which were bloodily suppressed. Life was tough and brutal. Mao's family were better off than many. His father, Mao Jianshen, was a self-made man with a quick temper who believed in the virtues of hard work and often beat his sons. Mao and his two younger brothers were much happier with their mother, Wen Chi Mei, an illiterate but devout Buddhist who tried to shelter them. Mao was very close to his mother. He would spend a lot of time arguing with his father. 
In his old age, when he went back to visit his parents' graves, Mao said his mother had been more important to him than his father. By the age of six, the young Mao was already toiling for long hours in his father's fields. He got a brief education, but by the time he was 13, he was working full time on the family farm. He grew increasingly restless. He lacked adequate education, and then he also had an inordinate ambition. And uh, this is a pretty volatile combination, and he really didn't know what to do with himself. But he always had uh, a voracious appetite for reading and a kind of spirit of radical adventure. When he was 14, his father arranged for him to marry a local girl. But Mao knew by now that he wanted to escape the confines of village life, and he never accepted or lived with her. Three years later, when he was 17, he finally left home and caught a boat to the bustling regional capital of Changsha, where he planned to enroll in a proper school. Almost immediately, he found himself caught up in a revolution. For years, China had been ruled by a corrupt and ineffectual monarchy. The country was falling apart. The monarchy was now overthrown by a modernizing republican movement, headed by the Kuomintang, or Nationalist Party. Mao reveled in the upheaval. Though in Shangsha, there was relative calm. He enrolled in a teacher training college, but as a gesture of support for the rebellion, cut off his traditional Chinese pigtail, until then a capital offense. There were roving bands of bandits. It was a time when a patriotic youth, and Mao was certainly that, wandered with a China. He joined a student group and dreamed of a new China. He believed in the importance of physical well-being. We know this because one of his friends from his youth wrote a book about their life together and how Mao had persuaded him and a few others to tramp across the countryside during the holidays, crossing streams and going up mountains because he felt that if patriotic young people were going to save China, they had to be healthy and strong in order to do it. In 1918, he qualified as a teacher. He was 24. In the same year, his much-loved mother died. Mao had no incentive to go home and left for the capital, Beijing, to look for a job. The city was full of young men trying to make a living. Mao had difficulty finding work. He eventually found a lowly job at the university and moved into a room in a poor part of the city, which he shared with seven other people. Mao was an assistant in the Beijing library. And I think for him, this was as close as he could get to a university education. Um, he was treated with a derision by the other students, by the students. He also, um, I think, was extremely frustrated by the level of this position. It was now, mingling with the students, that Mao heard about the communist revolution in Russia. He was fascinated by it. It seemed to offer new hope for the downtrodden peasants of his own country. Mao became a revolutionary Marxist and an inaugural member of the Chinese Communist Party. It was a small group that got together and Mao was there as a sort of representative of the uncouth masses, you might say. Um, nobody took him seriously at all. Mao returned to his home province of Hunan to preach communism to the peasants. With him, he took his new wife, 
the daughter of one of his old school teachers. But there was little time for family life. China was now run by a fierce anti-communist called Chiang Kai-shek. In 1927, he clamped down on his radical opponents. Thousands of communist supporters were brutally rounded up. Many were beaten and shot. Mao fled with his family and a straggling band of communists to the remote and inaccessible mountains of Jiangxi in southern China, a place he knew from his youth. He was in his late 30s, a marked man with a price on his head of a quarter of a million silver dollars. He was about to emerge as the most important revolutionary figure in China.